78 Sports TV here. Salute to the mighty LDBC. Y'all smash the like button, hit the subscribe, turn on your notification bell so you be notified when I drop a new video. And if you're digging the video, go ahead and share this joint. Let's go and get down to the smoke, man. So the Los Angeles Lakers just lost to the Detroit Pistons, one of the worst teams in the league, um, which brings their record down to four and three. Uh, J.J. Redick, um, coaching style, his expertise is starting to be exposed. He is not the genius that everybody said he was. He's not some man who's without flaws and set on TV every day, criticizing all these other coaches as if he's so – uh, superior intellectually. We haven't seen that yet from J.J. Reddick. Turns out he's a man. He's not a machine. He's a man. Ain't that something? Anthony Davis played well. Uh, 37 points back to his beast mode self. Um, LeBron James had 20 points. Uh, Austin Reeves had 17. Off of 7 to 17 from the floor, Austin Reeves shot a lot of shots. Uh, three for ten from the three-point line. Um, they only had they had ten points from their bench. Um, the Lakers' offense is their offense fine. Defensively, the D- Detroit Pistons, those young guys, ran up and down the court on the Lakers and embarrassed them. LeBron James looked horrible. He had twenty points, but he still looked horrible out there uh, chasing around them young guys. He just couldn't do it. You know what I mean? Uh, Cunningham was just a monster. He's just dogging him, you know, at will. But like I said, uh, I blame LeBron James and J.J. Reddick for this loss. Uh, with those two guys and their high basketball IQ that we keep hearing about, how they're so much uh, advanced and far superior to everybody else in the league, they should be able to put together wins that we've never seen before. I, I don't want to see this, Okay. Uh, I don't want to hear no excuses. Um, the Lakers should look much better than this. They shouldn't be losing to the Detroit Pistons, in my opinion. Okay? Let's get to the Milwaukee Bucks. My Milwaukee Bucks. The Bucks played without Giannis tonight. And we played the Cleveland, Cleveland Cavaliers again. Saturday night, we got dusted off. Very close game. Heartbreaking game. Uh, Giannis had a monster game. So did Dame. Both of them scored in the 30s or something like that. And, um, you know, we just didn't have enough from the bench. The only person from the bench who scored was Bobby Portis. And uh, uh, Gary Trent Jr. was one for ten from the field. Well, Gary Trent Jr. did not do any better this game. He's one for seven. He's trash. He needs to go. Doc Rivers, if you're going to have Gary Trent on the floor, just have him play defense. Tell him not to shoot. Seriously, tell him not to shoot. Why is he taking all these shots and the man is trash, obviously, okay? Now, with Giannis not playing tonight due to some type of torn labia or some type of vaginal injury, Giannis wasn't playing tonight, right? So that put in Bobby Portis. Bobby had 21 points, 18 big rebounds for Bobby, right? One turnover. See, the reason why I point out that one turnover is when you're watching Bobby play, it looks like Bobby doing a lot of boneheaded stuff because he's goofy. He like he moves the way he Bobby moves is like very uh it's very uh unorthodox and, and it's kind of goofy but the way he moves. And it looks like he's turning the ball over a lot more than he's actually doing. Bobby only turned the ball over once tonight. Only once, okay. So, Bucks fans love to get on Bobby Portis, but let me tell you something. For the money we paying Bobby and the production we get from him, we're getting a steal. Keep complaining. Keep on complaining. Keep keep being ungrateful. And he's going to be gone. He'll be gone. And when he's gone, we're going to have to sit back and find somebody else to put, pick up these pieces, okay? Uh, so, Bobby had 21 points. Big Brook Lopez gave us 13 points. I wish we could have got a little bit more from Brook. I don't know what's up with Brook three-point shooting. His, his three-point shooting has not been uh, where we want it to be. Brook Lopez is one for five. I was expecting him to at least hit two three-pointers. And just two of them would have won us the game. One more three from Brick, Big Brook Lopez would have won us the game. 
Gary Trent Jr. was one for seven. He's horrible. He's trash. There's really nothing else I can say about this dude. Uh, you know, it is what it is with Gary Trent Jr. He's just horrible. He's just out there taking up space. Doc Rivers likes this guy for whatever reason. I don't understand why, right? But he's, he hasn't produced for us. Pat Conton played 22 minutes and gave us seven points finally. Finally. And now, this is how pathetic it is. That, that we're happy that Pat Conte gave us seven points and five assists and four rebounds. Cool, but he should be doing that anyway. He should, he should, that, that should be the norm for Pat Conte coming off of the bench. That's not asking for a lot. You know what I'm saying? But but we're happy because he gave he gave us that finally. Um AJ Green. AJ Green, aka Billy the Kid, aka Young Pistol Starter. Gave us 21 points off the bench. A.J. Green played 34 minutes, 7 for 9 from the floor, 7 for 9 from the three-point line. A.J. Green, 6 rebounds, 1 assist. The boy came out there and balled out. Balled out. Now, why Doc didn't play A.J. Green the last game, I have no idea. But that's on Doc Rivers, Okay. These young guys need some run. Okay? You want to inspire the team? Let the young guys get out there and play with the vets, man. Let them learn. We losing anyway. What is is you, like, I don't understand what you're doing. My goodness gracious. Andre Jackson, a.k.a. Action Jackson, played phenomenal game, 25 minutes. He gave us seven points. But his defense is what shined tonight. I love Andre Jackson. I love uh, seven rebounds. He, he's, he's very active. This kid is a monster. I love Andre Jackson. Action Jackson. He come, he come out there and he put in work. You know what I mean? So we definitely need his, his energy. Uh, we need to be playing him. Right? Him and A.J. Green need to be getting wrong. When, when Dane come out the game and when uh, uh, Gary Trent Jr. come out the game, you need to be playing them. Gary Trent Jr., really, you need to cut down his minutes a lot, to be honest with you. I mean, I don't even know why Doc keep playing the Gary Trent Jr. He's trash. I mean, I'm sorry. This guy got he got to show us something. Uh, Rollins, he he just he, he came to the game and played pretty decent. You know what I'm saying? I'm glad got Doc went to the you know to depths of the bench for him. Now, Marshawn Bochamp, Bochamp wasn't even on the on the roster tonight. I don't know what he did to fall out of good graces with the Bucks, but he definitely did something wrong. Definitely, man, because, I mean, Marshawn ain't getting no run. He didn't get no run last year. He's doing something wrong. I don't know if it's his attitude and practice, determination. I don't know what it is, man, but, you know, I feel bad for him because this is – I had high hopes for Marshawn Bochan, but he – I mean, I guess he ain't going to work out. I just hope that he don't go somewhere else and turn into a star because I'm going to really be mad at the Milwaukee Bucks because whatever. It is what it is. But uh, at the end of the day, uh, the Bucks fall, lose six straight games in a row. <clears throat> uh, I don't remember ever us looking this bad with the amount of talent that we have in this team. Um like I said, I don't know why Giannis wasn't playing tonight. It's some ridiculous excuse. Chris Milton wasn't playing, of course, because he got two bad ankles, of course. And it won't be long before Damian Lillard starts faking injuries and he sits out as well. And uh, then we, we just got the young guys. It won't be long. A couple more losses. Watch what I tell you. Damian Lillard will claim his hip is hurting, his back, something. But he ain't going to be out here just playing by himself. He's not. So we're gonna see what the Bucks are made of. Okay. We're gonna we're gonna find out. Um, it's a lot of lies and rumors uh surrounding the Milwaukee Bucks organization. I seen Stephen A. Smith talking about how Giannis might want out, Giannis might opt out. Listen, first of all, Giannis is not asked to be opted out. This is something that this is pressure that the media, the mainstream media has put pressure on Giannis. Ever since he became a all-star type of player, they have put pressure on him to leave Milwaukee. They, they dragged Milwaukee, talked bad about the city. 
Uh, they keep talking about Giannis might leave the Bucks. It's a small market. They pressure him to leave. He resigned and then won the championship. Right? But after that, they put more pressure on him. Giannis, uh, uh, when they got Dame, I remember Stephen A. Smith with his hating self talking about, okay, yeah, he resigned. Giannis resigned with the Bucks, but make no mistake, this doesn't mean the Bucks can relax because Giannis can still force his way out. He can still force his way out. Like, what? This is how the media is trying to create these narratives to give Giannis some out. Or he can force his way out. And what did Stephen A. Smith say? I was watching the video from him. After he gets done with all this little nonsense about Giannis can force his way out of Milwaukee, he goes to talk about how Giannis should come to his New York Knicks. This is what I'm telling you. It's all it's all a game, bro. Then he got fake reports out here that Giannis said that his that his desired destination is Miami and Golden State. Cap. All cap. This is what the media wants him to go. He didn't say none of this. He said none of this. And this is why it irritates me a lot with Giannis is because he has to stop letting the media create these narratives for him. I understand he, he's a quiet guy and stuff, but he has to come out and check this stuff in right away and say, look, man, I'm a Milwaukee Buck. This is where I'm at. This is where I'm going to be at. Leave me alone. We from the hoop. That's what he got to do. He hear all this stuff from going on in the media. He do. Him and his brother hear it all the time. His, uh, the Nassis talk about all the rumors and stuff on his show. So so they can easily address this nonsense. It's, that's what it is. It's nonsense. Um, so Doc Rivers, is, is, is he's on the clock. He's under fire. Um, you, you're going to have to get this team to play better. There's no excuse for you to have Damian Lillard and Giannis Antetokounmpo and you can't put a lineup together on the floor for us to win games. This is it's, it's, it's ridiculous. This falls on Doc Rivers as well. Uh, his coaching is on the line here. His reputation is on the line. Okay? Giannis's leadership, decision-making is on the line as well. Damian Lillard has played his heart out the last couple of games. This game and... The, uh, uh, the last game against Cleveland, Dame Lillard showed up and showed out. Shout out to Dame. Can't get mad at Dame. He, he came to play. You know what I'm saying? So when Giannis come back, he has to step up, step up to the plate and get and put in work. And I don't know what we're going to do with Chris Middleton, but we got to figure out something because if Chris is not going to be available to us, then we need to just trade him. Seriously, bro, this is getting ridiculous now. I love Chris Middleton. He has been um, – very clutch for us in the playoffs. He helped us win a championship. I love Chris. I'm hard on him, but I love him. I'm hard on all the Bucks. You know what I'm saying? But I love him. Even Pat Conton. Love him too. But at the end of the day, it is what it is, man. It's, just, it's a business. So we'll find out what happened. You know what I'm saying? Let me know what y'all think. Saturday Day Sports TV. Salute to the mighty LDBC. Smash that like button. Share the video. I'm proud of here, deuces.